I'm Philip Thornton, and I'd like to welcome you to the teaching ministry of Legacy Faith Church. With ears to hear and eyes to see, it's now time for you to feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. Now let's get into the word together. But God gave me a word uh, this last weekend while I was down in South Carolina, and I know that the word that he gave me, um, I was not able to deliver it here because it was for, I mean, I wasn't able to deliver it there because it was for here. We're going to get into it tonight, praise God, but I'm excited about what God has shown me because as we move into this new season, this hour in the earth, you need to know that God, the Almighty, the King of glory, the Redeemer of mankind, the Creator of all things, the one who was and is to, is, is to come, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first, the last, the same, yesterday, today, and forever. God, your God, is working on your behalf. And as the Word of God declares, we're going to look at it, but it's time for God to go to work. And God is working on behalf of his people. He's working on behalf of you. And so do not fret. Do not fear. Do not get under the cloud uh, or the assignment of the enemy who's come to distract or to oppress or depress. I'm here to tell you, God is moving. Glory to God. And I'm going to show you some things tonight. So I pray that you're ready. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for allowing me to be away for the weekend. I was down ministering the word of the Lord at... Uh, Bishop Reverend A's church, of course, uh, Satish went on to be with the Lord a few years ago, and his son, Nikki, uh, has been the active pastor there, and we had an absolute awesome time. But I have to tell you, I was talking to Pastor David before service, and <clears throat> it's been four years since I've been down there. Bishop Satish was still alive the last time I was there, last time I was able to teach. And it's interesting to me because one of the things that you begin to recognize, and I believe that you need to hear and understand what it is that God has put within you. You here at Legacy Faith have been under a steady diet of prophetic decrees, chatter, understanding, wisdom, and revelation to understand things that many do not understand, even though they're believers, even though they're praying, even though they're hearing God, they're not necessarily hearing the same thing that you're hearing in the same time that you're hearing it. And I want you to understand something about the nature of God's word and how God begins to unfold to bring his people to the place of the unity of faith. God showed me a picture, and I'm going to open up with this as we get ready to go into the Word. But um, many of us that are in here, um, not my, well, I shouldn't say many of us. Um, I grew up in the era of World War II stories, right? My father was alive during World War II. Uh, he was in the military after World War II. And so uh, I understood, but we watched many, many, many movies back when I was a teenager of the Battle of Midway. We watched uh, Sherman. We watched Patton. We watched all of those great movies of my era, not to mention the ones that came after that. And there was something that emerged, and there's something that happened during World War II that there's a spiritual principle that we can glean from it that we need to understand. But one of the things that um, happened during that time of war was the technology wasn't what it is today. So the major way of communication was radio, shortwave radio, radio signals, and, and of course they had telephones and stuff. They didn't have cell phones. But, they, but it was primarily shortwave radio and radio communications that were instigated or instituted, right, in order for them to be able to communicate. And so in order for battle plans to be enacted or uh, released, in order for defenses as well as offenses to come forth, there, ha there was a constant, a constant moving of those who were the uh, senior officers that were taking the information, deciphering it, receiving that information, putting it down, looking at the big picture to try to determine 
what the enemies were doing, what their moves were going to be, and what should the move that we take in order to defend, offend, or establish a position to either stop the enemy from advancing or to surprise them, to get them in some, in some situation where we could defeat them, all right? So we understand that. That was battle plans, and it happened. Now, one of the things that would happen over and over and over again is when the enemy would begin to advance, when the enemy would attempt to advance a position or release a plan, they had to communicate with their front lines. They had to communicate with their mid-levels. They had to communicate at whatever level. So what would happen in the radio waves is that the radio waves would light up and they called it chatter. All right, chatter. There was radio chatter. If chatter was everywhere. And so when the chatter started, of course, intelligence officers in the United States military would have to then begin to decipher that chatter, try to figure out what ones were, were fake, which ones were smoke signals, and which ones were the ones that the enemy was lining into in order to establish their thing. So what happened there is the chatter was going in the atmosphere. The chatter did two things. Number one, it attempted to confuse the enemy. And number two, it also released the assignment of the advancement for the forces. Now, this happened on both sides. When the United States and the Allied forces had to communicate, they would do the same thing. They would light up the radio waves with chatter. They would begin to throw out all kinds of false information. But in the midst of that, there was truth. In the midst of all of that chatter, there were code words or code languages that established the uh, uh, um, position. And those who were trained, those who learned, understood and knew what to listen for how to listen for it, and then that was the information that began to give them the instructions on what the next move was going to be, whether it was defensive or offensive, where we were going to attack, etc. cetera. Um, when uh, I was a pilot, it was one of those interesting things because when you're a pilot, um, you're, you're always in your plane, you always have headphones on because you're listening to, all, you're listening to the airways and you're listening to the uh, control towers communicating with every jet, every pilot that's in the field. And so what happened was is, is you're listening and boy, just, just there's chatter and 90% of it, 99% of it doesn't mean anything to you until all of a sudden you hear your number. November 542, well, your ears perk up. That was my, my call number on my plane, November 542. And so when I heard November 542, I knew they were talking to me. And it was important that I listen to that instruction. Either there's a plane in my airspace, I need to look out, I need to change a heading, I need to do something in order to stay on course. Now, I believe that many of you can already hear or see the spiritual principle that I'm about to release but one of the things that I want you to understand is, is that in the earth today, there has been a lot of prophetic chatter. And in the midst of all of the prophetic chatter, there is a word from heaven. It's called a word in due season. And those who have an ear to hear will hear it. And those who hear it, you recognize that God is calling you by name. And he has included you in that which he is about to do. Amen. Now, it's interesting that one of the things that the United States military used, and this is part of my heritage as a Choctaw Indian, was the American military in order to keep the enemies, the allies, or the, the not the allies of the uh, uh, um, of the U.S. forces, but the enemy forces off guard, is they had to come up with code and language that the enemy could not decipher. And so, instead of coming up with some new language, what the U.S. military did is go to ancient language. All right, hear me, hear me now, glory to God. And so 
what they did was, what the U.S. military did was went to the Navajo Indians and the Choctaw, which I am, and they pulled from those two languages and pulled, recruited individuals who understood, knew, and taught those languages, which were not common languages in the earth. Therefore, there was nobody in Japan, nobody in Germany, nobody anywhere else that could decipher it because they had never heard this language before, and yet it was a viable language. Therefore, it was a language that communication could occur without any hindrance. It's interesting that the Navajo and the Choctaw who were participators, now listen to these words, participators in this advancement were called wind talkers. Ruach, breath of God, wind talkers. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know today that the Bible is full of understanding and revelation and God said, in the last days, with another tongue and stammering lips will I speak unto my people. And the ancient language of the Spirit, the world doesn't know it, the devil doesn't know it, but you know it. You are a spirit, and God communicates to you by his Spirit, and he has opened your ears to hear. And that which sounds like chatter to somebody else comes alive on the inside of a born-again, blood-washed believer, and by the Spirit of God, you know that this is God speaking and giving direct assignments to you, for you, and for for your generation. Glory to God. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're living in a time where God is moving and he's wanting to show himself strong and he is about to do one of the greatest works in the earth the world has ever seen and he has invited you to participate with him. He's invited you to come in line and get on board and begin to train your ear to hear so that you can walk with him. God does not want anybody in this room left behind. And I'm not talking about left behind because of the rapture. I'm talking about God doesn't want anybody in this room wondering, well, where'd they go? What happened? Right? Pastor Chad preached it on Sunday as far as God's moving and you've got to move with God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Chad, for a, a really great word to the people on Sunday. So God is wanting us to be ready for what it is that he's doing. And so, so I want you to give ear for just a minute and listen to the things that God is wanting to say. Because people, Psalms 102 verse 13 says what? The set time has come. The time to favor Zion has come in the earth. And we know that God has set appointed times in the earth. So if you have your Bibles, go with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we're going to open up there. And then I'm going to take you into what I believe is not only a word in due season, but I believe many of you are going to absolutely get excited about what God is speaking to us in our generation. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, once again, what a privilege and an honor it is to bring your word. God, as your word has free course and as the anointing prevails, I decree, God, that every man, woman, and child that is in this room, in this house, God, you have given them an ear to hear. Father, as they hear your word, may faith, God, the very spirit of faith, jump, come alive on the inside of them, moving them, Lord God, beyond the realm of hope into the security of the finished work. Holy Spirit, I give you praise and I thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said, amen. Glory to God. So, second, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and let me just uh, go here uh, to, to get this. Praise God. Um, if anybody... Listen, how many of you listened to this morning's tune-up, Tuesday tune-up? Praise the Lord. We're going to touch a little bit on that because it relates to where we're at. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And I, I do want to say this, um, ladies and gentlemen, and that is that it is time for God to work, but it's time for us to work with him. Okay? 
And, uh, and in, in saying that, don't keep silent. Open your mouths wide and God will fill it. God is doing something mightily. And he's got, he's got a target on every one of you. And so anyway, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 and following. Of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you have no need that I write to you about times and seasons. It was interesting being down in the church in Columbia, South Carolina. Great people love God, worshipers, prayers, intercessors. But one of the things that became very evident as I ministered the word of the Lord down there is they needed somebody to teach them times and seasons. In other words, as a group of people, they love God, they worship Jesus, they read the same book, nothing wrong with that. They're the redeemed of the Lord. Yes, they're saved. Yes, they have the mind of Christ. But because in their setting they have not come into the place of understanding, again, the place of understanding that God still works in times and seasons, that God has set specific times in the earth as markers within eternity that certain things must come to pass. And because they did not understand like you understand times and seasons, it took me quite a few hours of teaching to bring them to the place where I could minister a word in due season to them. All right. They did not understand times and seasons. Therefore, a word in due season would appear to them as a sign out of place. All right. Follow me for just a minute. Because, again, I've taught this. I've given the illustrations in the past. But I want you to understand this. Realizing that signs, heavenly signs, mean nothing to you until you locate yourself. Absolutely means nothing to you. The heavens declare the glory of God tonight, and yet people will miss the signs of the heavens because they haven't located themselves. So they'll look at what God is doing in the realms of heavenly places and wonder what this is. When the under, on the other hand, the person who has located themselves, they look at the same wonder in heaven and go, that's a sign for me now that's giving me direction. It's pointing me in the direction that I should go. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is full. It is absolutely full of God's word that will direct you, that will instruct you, that will keep you, that will bless you, that will strengthen you, that will heal you, that will perfect you. But until you locate yourself, you'll be like so many, having eyes they do not see and having ears they do not hear. Well has the prophet Isaiah prophesied, of them, but that's not you because you've got eyes to see and ears to hear. So he says, of the times and season, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. So as we have been taught, and and I want you to please, um, this is a, 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 and understand this. This is not me trying to get a pat on the back. I give all glory to God for saying, and for years ago when he said, Philip, I'm going to synchronize you with me. I'm going to begin to teach you about my times and my seasons so that those people that I have given unto you will not be ignorant in the days ahead. And remember, we've taught you these principles. I want you to understand it. There are five things that God does not want his people ignorant of. Five things that he said do not be ignorant of. 
Number one, don't be ignorant of God's ways, his ways, his ways, his ways, right? Not just his word, but his ways. And we have gone through and will continue to show you the patterns and God's ways in the earth because God will not break his ways. Not one word that he's spoken shall be altered, nor his covenant broken. When the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy, is revealed unto you through his word, God is saying, look, if I did it for them, I'll do it for you. Now believe it. And all things are possible to those who believe. So you've got to recognize that. You have to understand. You can't be ignorant of God's ways. The other thing you can't be ignorant of is spiritual brethren. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Brethren, I would not you to be ignorant. Now, it does not say of spiritual gifts. It says, I would not you to be ignorant of spiritual brethren. And what you need to recognize is, is that God has and always will use the voice of man as an oracle of God in the earth to equip, train, and establish his people. It is one of God's principal ways because you and I were given so that we could hear the voice of God and in hearing God's voice as it comes through the voice of a man that there, that individual, a prophet, a pastor, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, an apostle, when they begin to speak God's word as I'm speaking it, it bears witness with your inner man and you realize this isn't just religious babble. This is not chatter. This is the truth in the midst. This is not just the chatter that's out there. This is that thing that causes the ear to perk up that says November 542 and boom. Yes, sir. I hear you, right? So as God is speaking, I want you to understand that this is one of the ways that God has established. And, and this is why this is why the enemy hates the local church. It's why he hates pastors and prophets and teachers and apostles. It's why he does everything he can to divide and separate people from a house that's preaching and declaring the truth. He does everything he can. So, so God says, don't be ignorant of my ways. Don't be ignorant of spiritual brethren. The next thing he says, don't be ignorant of, is faith. Now, every one of these, you'll find that God says, don't be ignorant of these. Well, so don't be ignorant of God's ways. Don't be ignorant of spiritual brethren. And don't be ignorant of the law of faith. This is why we spend so much time over and over and over again helping you understand that true biblical faith begins where the will of God is known. And the spiritual law of faith is you must hear it and then believe it in your heart. And when you believe it in your heart, the third step to moving with God, you got to say what God says. You got to be an imitator of God in life. You've got to step in line with what it is that God has said to do. So don't be ignorant of faith, people. And don't think that faith is just your religious application. Faith is not Legacy Faith Church. Faith is not Baptist or Methodist or Catholic. Faith is a spiritual force that comes from God, is ignited in the spirit of man, and it's what releases God's power to produce in you all that God has said belongs to you. The fourth thing he said don't be ignorant of is Satan's devices. Don't be ignorant of the devil. Don't be ignorant that he's out there as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Don't be ignorant that he has chatter as well. Don't be ignorant that he's going to do everything he can to throw you a head fake so he can ambush you. Don't be ignorant of the spirit of divination, the spirit of Korah, the spirit of Cain, the spirit of Balaam, the spirit of Apollyon. Don't be ignorant of the Baal system to the world. Don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. And unfortunately, in the Western church, we're probably the most ignorant group that ever existed. Don't be ignorant. Praise the Lord. Amen. When I say ignorant, I mean that we choose to close our eyes and close our ears. We don't want to deal with it. When stuff, when, when stuff begins to happen, we would rather turn our back on it and pretend it didn't happen and 
hope that it goes away than to address it and overcome it using our faith. Come on, people. And so we have to realize that we can't be ignorant of Satan's devices, and this is part of God's design. Because there are, and, and I love the word in due season that's coming tonight, but see, there are people in this room that almost lost, but you didn't. There are people in this room that almost slipped, but you didn't. There are people in this room that almost didn't make it, but God, in his infinite wisdom, through faith, reached you and pulled you out of darkness into marvelous light. And somehow, in the midst of the chaos and the chatter, you once again heard your name called from heaven, and he rescued your soul from the pits of hell to bring you into a full force move of God that he's designed for the last days. People, I want you to learn to give God praise because literally, some of us in here don't want to think that we almost did make it, but I'm here to tell you, you almost didn't make it. And I'm not here to say that in a negative way to condemn anybody. I'm here to glorify God to say, listen to me. You're here now with an ear to hear. You're not wandering in darkness tonight. You're not out there wondering what's going on, but you're in the tabernacle. You're in the presence of God. You're in the pavilion of heaven, hidden from the strife of tongues. You're in the place where you're hearing God's word and so that God's word can begin to perfect and equip you. Do you see this? Yes, sir. Yes. Glory to God. And then the fifth thing, the last thing he says, don't be ignorant of, 2 Peter 3, 8. Don't be ignorant of this one thing. A day of the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. This coincides with and confirms exactly what the Apostle Paul was preaching here in second, I mean, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Of the times and seasons, you don't need somebody to write on you. Why? Because you're not ignorant that a day of the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. You're not ignorant that God has and always will keep the set times that he has determined. He has appointments with you and he has appointments in history in order to bring about and fulfill his word. And he knows those who are his and he chose you for this time and he chose this time for you, and we're not ignorant of these things. So understanding the times and seasons, he goes on in verse 2 and recognize that, listen to these words again, so the fifth thing that we're not ignorant of is a day the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. Day number one, day number two, day number three, day number four. First four millennia on planet earth, brought us to the beginning of day number five, which is when God comes in the flesh to release his blood for the plan of redemption for mankind. Day number five, day number six have now been completed. 6,000 years have been completed, which leaves day number seven. Now watch this real quick. So the first six days on planet earth were days in which Creation was unfolding, and God was revealing himself to man. But day number seven is the day of the Lord. Okay, so read verse 2 now. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Glory to God. When God created the day, the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning were the second day. The evening and the morning were the third day. The evening and the morning were the fourth day. The evening and the morning were the fifth day. The evening and the morning were the sixth day. The evening and the morning were the seventh day. The day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. Ladies and gentlemen, it's dark on planet Earth right now. We're in the beginning of the seventh day, and the day of the Lord is at hand. Whew. 
And he chose you to witness it, to be a part of it, to experience it. The darkness precedes the light. The day of the Lord is at hand. And it so comes as a thief in the night. Other words, unexpectedly by so many in the midst of the darkest part of the day as it begins is when Jesus is going to appear. People, Jesus is coming. And he's coming again. And when he comes, as we saw in Malachi chapter 3, he will come suddenly to his temple. And he will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, the witches, the warlocks, the world, the zoot guys, the spirit of the world. God is moving now. And ladies and gentlemen, he chose us to participate as the ambassadors of his justice in the earth to execute judgment against the powers of darkness. I hope you can see and recognize why it's important, why you should at least give a little bit of time to understanding God's word, God's ways. Don't be ignorant of his ways. Don't be ignorant of spiritual brethren, right? Don't be ignorant praise the Lord, of Satan's devices. Don't be ignorant of um, faith. Praise the Lord, slip me for a minute. And don't be ignorant of times and seasons. So as God continues to draw you in and bring you to this place, I, I, I want you to experience the extreme mercy of God for God to say, listen, everybody that's in here, understand how many people aren't in here. Now, this isn't to condemn them. They should be in here. They need to be in here. They need to come into the tabernacle of his presence. They need to come into the pavilion of his presence, being hidden from the strife of tongues or the chatter of the zutkais, the spirit of this world that has been released as an onslaught to seduce, to deceive, and bring people into further bondage. Do you see this? Praise the Lord. So as we move into this, look at what he said. Look, let's, let's read a couple more verses and then I'll shift. For when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction will come upon them. As travail upon a woman with child and they will not escape. You, brethren, are not in darkness. I want you to just say, Jesus, thank you. I'm not in darkness. Praise the Lord. I say it like you believe it. Say it like you hope it. Say it like you trust in it. Jesus, thank you that I'm not in darkness. Now, one of the things that I believe is so uh, powerful about the word that God is giving us is we've all said this phrase. I've said it before recently, but people, you can't unsee it. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Once you understand it, it doesn't matter how much you go to the Word. You go, oh, well, there it is again. Oh, well, there it is. All right, well, praise God. God wants you not walking in darkness. He wants you seeing. All right? So, you, brethren, are not in darkness that that day would overtake you as a thief, for you are the children of light and the children of the day. Which day? You're the children of the day of the Lord. You're a children of that day. Oh, praise the Lord. Huh, do you see what I see? Star to star. You're children of the day. The earth has been travailing, groaning for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. God. You're children of the day. People, that's not children of the corn. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. That's, that, that's not the hills have eyes or anything weird like that. No. You're children of the day. That you don't walk in darkness, but when you walk, God's word, Psalms 119, is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Psalms 119, 130, that the entrance of God's word gives 
light and brings understanding. Psalms 119, verse 124 has become one of my recent favorite confessions. Lord, I am your servant. Give me wisdom that I might know your testimonies, for it is time for you to work, even though they have made void your law. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that the Spirit of God is wanting to pour into you such wisdom, revelation, and understanding so that you can locate yourself, so that you can see and understand the times and the seasons that are at hand, and so you will know that which God is about to do. As we've been discussing the dawning of this new year, 5783, within the decade of pay, and we know that we're in the beginning of the year, and the prophetic word to you, to me, is that it is a year of restoration and recompense. And in the time of restoration, we realize that God wants to restore everything that has been stolen. And so I've given you the example out of Luke chapter 15 of the father running to restore, first of all, the mantle of righteousness. But the mantle of righteousness is also a mantle of power. God is not just restoring righteousness to you so you can walk around. Um, you know, when I was in the United Arab Emirates in the UAE, in Dubai and Abu Dhabi and those places a few years ago, it was interesting because you could tell which people were descendants of Dubai and which ones were descendants of Abu Dhabi and which ones were descendants of Sharjah. And each one of those are an emirate. Therefore, they are in the lineage of the wealth of that nation. They're part of the family heritage. And how you could tell them was by how they dressed. In their dress, they all wore robes, but one would have, say, a red and white checkered scarf with a black band. One would have a white scarf with, with, with a red band or whatever it was. And you would know, okay, those are the descendants of Abu Dhabi. Those are the descendants of Dubai. Now, the interesting thing in the Emirates was that everybody, if you were in that dress, your needs were taken care of. You were already wealthy. Matter of fact, everybody in the nation served you. All of the expats that lived in Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and Sharjah in the UAE, every person who came to live and work there, whether they were in the oil fields, whether they were in the hotel business or the restaurant business, they were welcomed into that country only to serve the wealthy. All right. Now, that is a natural picture of what God does not want you walking in in the spirit, even though when you're clothed in righteousness, certainly that is the application as the righteousness of God. God has already provided. You'll never lack. You'll never come behind. You'll never ever be under, but you'll always be above. And in faith, you begin to carry yourself like that. But it's not just a mantle, an outward dress of righteousness, but it's an inward dress where the heart made right before God is now able to function and operate in the power of God's Spirit in the earth as a son of God with dominion over all of creation. Okay. So think about it for just a minute. Let's, let's use the UAE as an example. This was not part of my teaching, but I'm going to go ahead and use this particular passage. So if you were a part of the descendants of Abu Dhabi, okay, therefore every dollar that came in to the UAE because of oil riches, so billions of dollars daily flowing into that nation was released and given to all of those descendants. Never a need. Never a need. Never a need. Now, if that's the natural of the UAE, and God in his word says, hey, 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 check, check me out, people. Oh, my sons and daughters, why 
are you concerned about stuff when I have declared the earth is mine and the fullness thereof? When I have already said the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to me, the hidden treasures of secret places I will give and reveal unto you. The gold is mine. The silver is mine. People, there is no lack in the kingdom of God, and there is no lack for those who walk in the sonship, the righteousness that God has given. This is why the power of your faith is going to be important. Because you will never access anything the kingdom of heaven has for you without using your faith on purpose for it. Because it's by faith that you overcome the zutkeis, the spirit of the world. It's by faith that you now use God's word in dominion to take back everything the enemy has stolen. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the beginning of this new decade, 5783, and it's a time of restoration for the righteous. God is restoring everything. It's coming fast. It's coming quick. But the restoration is going to be first presented to you as a robe. When the father ran to the son, the first thing he said is, get the best robe and put it on him. The first thing that's going to happen in this season is new mantles of authority, glory, power, and strength that comes upon your life. It's God's will for our generation. Again, as the justice of God unfolds in the earth. So here comes both restoration and recompense or vengeance. As God's justice unfolds, his judgment begins in the house of God. Oh, Mufasa. Ooh. Right? Say it again. Judgment in the house of God. Ooh. Judgment in the house of God. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, do you understand that when God judges you, you've already passed from death to life. When God judges you, he judges you as righteous he judges you as those who have believed and imparts, imputes unto you the wisdom of his kingdom so that you can access all that his kingdom avails by faith. When God judges you, he judges you as a man or a woman who has received the same spirit of faith who believes and therefore speaks. That's why the enemy is always trying to attack you at your faith, to get you to agree with stupid, to get you to look at circumstances and wonder why it's not working for you instead of no. Ladies and gentlemen, your faith is your servant. It's working for you. It's producing. Don't back up. Don't shrink back. Don't stop. Glory to God. God is working, and his word is working on your behalf. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. Well, Pastor, you just don't know. I'm looking at my bills. Quit looking at your bills and keep looking to the Word of God. Now, I'm not saying be ignorant and don't pay your bills. I'm saying you keep believing God and confessing what God says. You stay with the program. You continue to do that which is right, and the best robe comes upon you. Put upon them the best robe, put a ring upon his finger. Ring is authority. It's the signet ring. It's the authority of the kingdom of heaven to access whatever treasures are needed, whatever wisdom is required, whatever word needs to be produced. That's what the signet ring produces. Remember, it is the glory of your father to conceal a thing, but it's the honor of kings to find it out. Get that signet ring going. Get that thing moving. God will expose. He will reveal. He will teach. He will instruct, right? Glory to God. And, of course, and then he puts shoes on your feet, which is sonship. Now, that's a different message. But I want to get to this word tonight because I believe it's a word in due season. And the word in due season, it's 820. Oh, oh, you should have heard me down in South Carolina. 
They didn't have, they had a big clock. And it was a countdown clock. It started counting down from the beginning. And I'm preaching, I look up, and I'm like, somebody just turned the clock off, just turned the thing off, praise the Lord. Why? Well, praise the God, because God wants you to hear and receive his word. So let's just say this real quick. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah comes before the Lord, and there's two significant events that happen in Jeremiah. Number one, God speaks to Jeremiah and says, Before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you and ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. I've given you authority to root out, pull down, throw down, to destroy, but also to build and to plant. Okay? So God speaks a word in due season to Jeremiah and says, These are the things that I have anointed you to do throughout your lifetime. You're going to root things out. You're going to pull things down. You're going to throw down some, and, and, and I can get into all the different significances. But when it comes to you will build and you will plant, the word plant in the Hebrew literally has this meaning, to obtain children. Not only to build, but to obtain children. Now, most of you are familiar with Psalms chapter 127 that says, your children are a heritage of the Lord. Now, I'm going somewhere with this because this is the word of the Lord in due season. Because I know that there are people in this room that you have children right now that are living like the prodigal. You have those children that are not really walking and synced with what God is doing. Some of you are those children, but most of you or all of us uh, excuse me, that have children, we want God to not only help them and deliver them, but we want them to come into the place of understanding, number one, who God is as their Redeemer, and number two, to begin a walk in the glorious liberty that Christ purchased for them. We want them free from the junk. We want them free from the spirit of the world. We want them free from the mind-blinding spirits of unbelief. We want deliverance to the captives. Our children are a heritage of the Lord. Psalms 115, God says, I will bless you and your children more and more. Psalms 139 says, your substance was not hidden from him, that even when they were in their mother's womb, before they were in their mother's womb, they were fearfully and wonderfully made, that God already knows who they are. We know that in Romans, God knows them by name and from before the foundations of the earth. Because of who you are locating yourself, God, I'm telling you tonight, has already marked your children. Mark your children. Mark those things that you're believing God for. Mark and trust God because the deliverer is in the midst. God who comes to restore all things, when he begins to judge in the house of God, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8, I will gather the nations. I'll begin to gather the children. So one of the first moves of God that we're going to see in the time of restoration is an ingathering of the people of God and those that are connected to you. And I'm going to show you a word here, and this is a word in due season. Isaiah chapter 50 says, God, you've given us a word in due season so that we can speak this word. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 49. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everybody okay? Amen. Thank you for turning the clock off. Praise the Lord. My wife just looked at the clock. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 49. If you get a chance, I strongly encourage you to try to go back and listen to today's message on, because I was in Isaiah 47 about the virgin daughter of Babylon. Hallelujah, and uh, you just have to hear it. But Isaiah chapter 49, 
And I want to take the liberty real quick to read this in um, maybe the message translation. The message translation. So let me pull it up here. I think I have it. Glory to God already pulled up. But I want you to hear it. Okay, well, yeah, we'll read it in there. This is the um, CEB, which is the common English. Listen to me and pay attention, all of you people far away. The Lord has called me from my birth. He called my name even when I was in my mother's womb. He made my mouth like a sharp sword, and he hid me in the shadow of his very own hand. He made me as a sharpened arrow, and he's concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I show my glory. But I said, Lord, I've wearied myself in vain. I've used up my strength for nothing. Nevertheless, the Lord will grant me his justice for my reward is with my God. Everybody say, my reward, my reward. is with my God. All right, word in due season. Everybody say, this is a word in due season. You're going to be able to take this to the bank, ladies and gentlemen, to the spiritual bank of heaven and cash your check, glory to God, and get what God says. My reward is with my God. For now the Lord has decided, verse 5, the one who formed me from the womb as his servant, this is what he has decided. He's decided to restore Jacob unto himself so that Israel might also return to him. Moreover, I'm honored in the Lord's eyes. My God has become my strength. Now, people do not stumble over the fact that he's saying uh, Jacob and Israel. As believers, we don't replace Israel, but we are the people of God. When you come into Christ, you are the wild olive branch that has been grafted in. So the promises of God that are for Israel, Zion, Jacob, they belong to you. Okay, so understand that. A lot of people say, well, Pastor, that's, that's great, but that's not for us. That's for No, 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 that's for you. It's a word in due season for you. All right. God has become my strength. For God said, it is not enough. Even though you are my servant, it's not enough just to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the survivors of Israel. For this is my appointment on you, says the Lord, for you will be a light to the nations so that my salvation can reach the ends of the earth. All right, hold on. Word in due season. Praise the Lord. For the Lord, who is the Redeemer of Israel, he is the Holy One, says to everyone who has been despised and rejected by nations, every one of you that have become a slave of the rulers of the world, this is what the Lord say, kings will see and stand up, commanders will bow down on account of the anointing of the Lord who is upon you, for God is faithful, he is the Holy One of Israel, and he has chosen you. Look to your neighbor and say, he chose you. Whether you like it or not, he chose you. Praise the Lord. You're chosen. You're here. Tag your it. Glory to God. He chose you. For the Lord said, at the right time, I answered you. Here comes times and seasons. On the day of salvation, I helped you. I've guarded you. I've given you as a covenant people to restore the land and to reassign deserted properties, saying even to those that have been prisoners, come out, and to those that sit in darkness, show yourselves, walk in the light. Along the roads, the animals who graze, their pastures will be on every treeless hilltop. 
They'll never hunger or thirst again. The burning heat and sun will not strike them because one who has compassion for them will lead them and will guide them by streams, springs of water. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down beside still waters and in green pastures. He restores my soul. My cup runs over, right? Come on, people. Look, they're going to come from far. They're going to come from the north and the west and from the southland. Look, sing, O heavens, and rejoice, earth. Break out now, for the mountains shall now break forth with a song, for the Lord has comforted his people and taken pity on those who have been suffering. Now, ladies and gentlemen, again, I'm wanting to paint the picture of what you're coming out of and what you're stepping into. Did everybody hear it? Did everybody go to sleep? It became 8.30 and everybody went home. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You got a word in due season. Keep watching. As for the ruined places, oh, let's see. I didn't get there yet. Zion says, Zion has said, the Lord's abandoned us. The Lord has forgotten us. But God says, can a woman forget her nursing child and fail to pity the child of her womb? Even if they do forget, I will not forget you, says the Lord. For look, you are engraved on the palms of my hands. There I have ins inscribed you. Your walls of restoration are before me continually. And the builders will come Quickly, look, those who have destroyed and attempted to demolish you will depart suddenly, running in fear from you. Look up, look around and see. They have all gathered, and as they came against you, I rose up against them. And surely as I live, says the Lord, I will put them all on like ornaments, and I will bind them like a bride. How many of you know Isaiah in the year King Uzziah died saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Know the revelation of the train? It's the victory of God over the kings of the earth. Anyhow. For the ruined and desolate places and the destroyed land they will soon be restored and crowded with new settlers. Those who swallowed you up in the past will be far from you. You will again hear the children who were born, uh, <coughs> who were born bereaved say, this is the place that God has chosen and it's getting too crowded. God has made new room for me to settle. You will think to yourself, where did all of these come from? For in the past season, I was desolate and barren. I was exiled and been sent off. Who raised all of these? Where did all of this come from? I was left behind. I was alone. Where, uh, and where, where did all of these come from? Here's where it comes. Now, this is the word in due season. For the Lord God says, I will raise my hand to the nations. I will raise my hand to the peoples. I will lift up my signal in the midst of the chatter. You're going to hear the word of the Lord. They will bring your sons in their arms. They will carry your daughters on their soldiers. Kings shall even become your attendants and servants, and their queens shall be your nursemaids. With faces to the ground, the leaders of the earth will bow themselves before you, even licking the dust from your feet, for you will know Indeed, I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord. The one who hopes in me will never be ashamed. Here comes verse 24 and 25. This is the word of the Lord, and this is what God spoke to me for you, and I have to release this tonight. Can loot be taken from warriors? Can a tyrant's captives escape? When a warrior has come in and looted the nations and gathered the loot, who can go in and take the loot from the warrior? 
When a tyrant has risen to a place of prominence, exercising his tyrannical authority over the earth, can his loot also escape? Can he be looted? Will his wealth come into subjection? This is what the Lord says. Can a tyrant's captives escape? Can a tyrant's captives escape? The Lord says, even the captives of a warrior will be taken and set free. The tyrant's loot will depart from him. I myself, says the Lord, will oppose those who have opposed you. Some of you are already witnessing this. You're already witnessing God opposing those who once opposed you. You're already seeing the hand of God working on your behalf where in the previous season it seemed like the tyrant's decisions were prevailing against and it seemed like he was able to hold back or try to stop you. But God says, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh I'm going to oppose those who oppose you and I myself will save your children. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the word of the Lord in due season for Legacy Faith Church. The salvation of God has come. I've come to save your children. I've come to deliver them. And you will see in this season the hand of God working on your behalf. And those that have resisted and rejected God, God is supernaturally going to release an anointing that will cause them to turn from wickedness to righteousness, turn out of darkness into light. And God said, I myself will oppose those who opposed you and I will save your children. Praise the Lord. This is what he says. For I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh and as with wine with their own blood will they get drunk so that all flesh will know that I am the Lord. I am your Savior. I am the mighty one of Jacob. One translation says the wicked will turn against themselves and begin to devour themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, 5783, we have stepped in. Tabernacles is over. It's time for the year to unfold. And we're about to watch God begin to move not only in restoration but recompense. And your enemies are going to begin to turn against themselves and devour one another. For God himself is opposing those who have opposed you and he will save save your children. Amen. Stand to your feet. Praise the Lord. Thank you for viewing our online experience. I pray today's teaching has helped you draw closer to Jesus or inspired you with wisdom and revelation from the Word of God. If you're a new believer or would like to know more about what it is to follow Jesus, please reach out to us on the website or follow us here on social media. Also, if you'd like to contribute to making a difference to lives around the world, please select the giving button on our website. We would love to stay connected with you. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Here at Legacy Faith Church, we decree, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith.